Hello and welcome to this Ionic Creator tutorial video where we are looking at different types of list controls. So obviously when we are building our mobile apps, lists are an extremely popular way of displaying various types of information. And so when you combine lists with types of menus or tabs and uh, paragraphs and things like that, we can really display our information in a visually appealing way that is very organized. So I have started a blank Ionic Creator project, and we are going to come down here in our components list and look at a couple of the different type of list items that are available. So just to give you an idea of what some of these different list items look like, if you come over here and just pick like a regular list item, and I'm going to put some separators, uh, spacer items between these so we can see the difference. So a regular list item uh, just has some text. A thumbnail, obviously we have some uh, image or an area for an image. We can do an icon. And then we can also do an avatar. So we can take a look at what these different list items look like. And we get some different kinds of properties based on um, what each one of these does. So a basic list item, um, you can set up a theme, you can give it uh, a type, and in fact you can change this to an icon, av avatar, or thumbnail type if you should decide later that you don't want just the regular list item. Uh, the content is ultimately what's going to tell us what goes inside of here. So I could put like list item in here and you can see that text updates. And you can choose uh, if there should be an icon. And the creator has all of the built-in Ionic system-based icons inside. Uh, if you do decide to add an icon, it will show up over here on the right. As you can see, I added the little alert. Uh, so you can add in these icons directly, um, or you can choose no icon, and it won't show up. Now, the most common way to use these kinds of list items is to display, obviously, a list of things that we might have, such as uh, an array or maybe even uh, like a programmatic list of things that we have gotten from the user or from something like a web service. So by adding an Angular directive, such as like an ng repeat, we can go through a list of items that maybe you've defined in your code or like I said, you've gotten from a web service or something like that. Um, to be able to go through a list of items. So looking at our thumbnail, uh, you can see, you know, you get the opportunity to upload a thumbnail. So just like when we uploaded our file, you can upload a thumbnail and, and then decide uh, what you want to have go inside of there. So great when you're displaying maybe a list of products or a list of users. You also get a couple of different uh, things that you can do here, such as the icon, you can choose if there should be an icon that will show up over here on the right. So that's still an option. And you can add in what are called swipe buttons. Now swipe buttons are available on, on all of our different list types. But if we add a swipe button, this is a button that we can add. Um, so let's say I want to add, um, we can pick a color uh, that pops out on the side when the user swipes over the list item. And so if I kind of drag and swipe, you can see there's my button and then I could hook a click event up to that so we can kind of open and close the list item and it has a nice animation effect to it. So that's what the swipe button does. And since this is a bigger list item than just the basic list item, we can also get uh, a line two. So kind of a subtext for our heading and you can choose things like word wrap and stuff like that. You can also set up linking on these types of list items. So just like I've showed you previously with buttons, uh, if you want to link these to, let's say this was a, a user's thumbnail and you wanted to click on their thing and it would take you to their profile page or something like that, you could set up that linking. So looking at our icon list item, you get a lot of the same features, um, but not an image. We do get an icon. So we, we get that built-in list of, of different types of icons that are available. And so then you could um, have your different list items inside of here. Again, you can choose decoration for the right side, swipe buttons, angular directives, things like that. And our avatar list item works almost the same way. You can upload an avatar image. So let's go grab a picture. 
and you can see how that's displayed in the nice little avatar circle. It's kind of cropped down. Um, you get the text and the subtext. Um, you still get swipe buttons. You can get icons on the right hand side. Now I do want to point out if you don't want to upload avatar images directly, you can switch this to a text input, which then allows you to provide a URL or a template tag. So let's say you're pulling this information from like a data source, like a, a web service or a database or something like that. If you have an image uh, that you can then put in a template tag, you could put that in here. You could use a URL. You can even use some kind of dynamic URL. Um, to pull that image up. So aside from some of the various controls and things that we can use inside of our, or working with these various list items um, controls inside of our app, let's look at how we can use them with some of our actual JavaScript code. So I'm just going to remove um, all but the picture based one so that we can kind of look at how this works. So in the interest of time, I just went ahead and set up this uh, nice little array of customers. We've got Lisa, who's a student, and I have a picture that I pulled off the internet. Garfield, um, who's Cat, who I pulled a picture of him up. And then Bender from Futurama, you know, his job is a bender and a picture of him. And so um, in, in a previous video, I showed you how to create this kind of array on the scope. And so if we want to be able to loop through each one of these and display them in a list, kind of like this, uh, applying the different pieces of information to uh, the different properties inside of our list item, then uh, we can just set that up using our template tags. So the first thing I'm going to do is switch our picture to a text input, and then I'm going to switch this to a template tag. Uh, the double curly braces, and we want that this is a customer, oops, caps lock, customers.picture is where that data is going to come from, right? Customers is the array, picture is the property. For our content, instead of hard coding this in here, I'm going to use the template tag of customers.name. And for the line two, I'm going to use customers.job. So you can see in the layout, when we're just trying to see what this looks like, um, it doesn't look very attractive. And then of course, we haven't told it yet uh, that it needs to loop through all of the items in the customer's array, pulling out each one and creating a list item for each one, filling in this, uh, the details here from the template tags. So to do that, we come down to our Angular directives and we add an ng repeat and so an ng repeat really does work like a for each statement, if you're familiar with those in various programming languages. So our uh, ng repeat is going to be customer in customers, uh, which means I've written these wrong up here. This should be customer.job, not customers. We're referencing the individual customer. Yep. So customer.picture, customer.name, customer.job. We're going to loop through each customer in the customer's array, and it will create one of these list items filling in the different property data from our template tag. So when we run our app, we should see our three different items in the array, the three different pictures with their names and their jobs filled in. And so if the data in our array changed, so let's say we wanted to add a fourth item. So I could come down here to my array, and I could start a new item name. Let's do Stewie. All right, everybody likes Family Guy. Uh, his job is being a baby. And then I grab a picture. Oops, curly brace. So now we have our fourth element in our array with the picture that I have chosen. So it doesn't really matter which of the list items uh, or list control types that you're using. They all kind of work about the same as far as um, you know, using an Angular directive to loop through something like an array. 
uh, doesn't matter where you've gotten that data in the array from. So let's take this one step further and look at how we can direct the user out of the app into the browser and uh, kind of fill in a URL for them um, should we need to you know, present our user with a website instead of pulling that content into our app, they would leave the app, launch the default browser for their device, and then go to the website that we have specified. So for example, let's say I wanted to add to my elements here, the URL to each item or each of our customers, uh, Wikipedia page. So I could add in another property uh, named URL, and I could equal that to the Wikipedia page for each one of these characters. So there's Lisa. And so now I have added in a URL property with the Wikipedia link for each one of these characters. And now I can make sure that you have the list item uh, selected and you come up here to the link section. And under the hyperlink, this is where you can put in a URL. Now, since we're using full URLs, we can just use our template tag, customer.url. If you were using something like a partial URL or maybe a dynamic URL that would take them to um, maybe like a profile page, you could pass in the URL and then add in the template tag where maybe an ID number would go. And that way you're building kind of a dynamic URL on the fly. So at this point we can save and preview and we should still see our list. But now when we click on these, it should launch the web browser. Now in the uh, Ionic Creator demo, it's actually just going to create a new browser window for me. But if you're using that um, app where you can test your creator apps on your phone, then you'll be able to see that this launches directly on the phone. Um, but as I click on each one of these, then I get the browser uh, window with the Wikipedia page that I've directed them to. So like I said, you can either put in, like in this case, a full URL so that the browser window launches, or you could put in a partial URL um, so I think these are all pretty uniform. So like for example, if we just used en.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash then whatever this part was that was specific to this character. So like this one is just the Lisa Simpson part. This one is Garfield. We could take this all out. This was Bender with like Futurama in uh, parentheses. This one was Stewie Griffin. So like we don't have to store the part of the URL that is uh, repetitive. It should all still work the same. Um, and I'll, let me go back real quick before I show this. So up here we have the part of the URL that's the same and then just the template tag where we're gonna fill in that data from the URL property. So when we test, we should get the same behavior Right? Nothing should have changed from the user's perspective. The, everything still works the same, uh, but we are basically building a custom URL from the data that we have stored in our array. So I hope this has been helpful in showing you how you can use different types of list controls, dynamically run through lists of items in your code to populate a list control and then be able to launch that browser window for those times that when we you know, want to direct the user out um, to the browser window outside of the app environment to display something important, maybe even a static URL or a built uh, like custom URL, uh, all of that, that kind of thing is possible. So the code for this project is available on the GitHub. So if you're wanting the, the code so you can try it on your own, you can go check that out. And as always, uh, feel free to contact me if you're having any trouble or if you have any questions. Thanks. See you next time.